Hello everyone, what we have here to show you is the Japanese battleship Yamato. Now the Yamato was the largest battleship and the most powerful one that was ever built by any nation. The Japanese built the Yamato in the years leading up to the Second World War. They built her in complete secrecy because they, after they had withdrawn from all treaty obligations regarding the size of naval warships and the size of guns, and they wanted nobody to know about the advantage that they had in overwhelming firepower and armor protection. I'm not going to give a complete rundown of the specifications of the Yamato, but I will include that in on-screen text. As for the Yamato service history, in very brief, she was commissioned in late December 1941 and had a very uneventful career, really, until, up until her, her demise on April 7th of 1945, when she was part of, the, of a massive suicide mission to Okinawa. The United States forces were invading Okinawa and the Japanese decided they were going to they were going to sacrifice the Yamato and her crew in really a one-way suicide mission. They were going to try to sneak up into Okinawa undetected with a small fleet centered around the Yamato. They were going to try, they were going to run the Yamato aground and use her main guns as field artillery to try to fend off the approaching Allied forces. It was a suicide mission from the get-go. Nobody in the Imperial Japanese High Command had any real hope that it would work. And the real reason they chose to do this was because of the, the Japanese unleashed the core of the kamikaze, and we tend to believe that, it, that the kamikaze missions were all involved aircraft pilots sacrificing themselves. And that is not really true. The Japanese were also willing to sacrifice entire warships as part of suicide missions, again, kamikaze missions. And that was the fate selected for the Yamato. The Japanese Imperial Command had decided that the Naval, that the naval Air, Air Corps or the Naval Aviation Division had already provided so many kamikaze pilots brave enough, to, brave enough to sacrifice themselves for their emperor. That they and they felt that the Japanese surface fleet should make the same sacrifices. So the Yamato and her crew were chosen to sacrifice to be sacrificed in a in a kamikaze mission, arguably the largest kamikaze mission ever. As a in order to boost the morale of the remaining of the remaining Japanese armed forces and and their population on the home front, so on the seventh of April, the United States intercepted United States forces, the United States Navy intercepted the Yamato en route to Okinawa, and they subjected her to a massive attack that. One of the largest air attacks, I believe, on a single warship. And eventually, through, through night, I believe, 19 torpedoes and how, how many heavy armor-piercing bombs they dropped on her, but they finally inflicted enough damage that caused her to capsize and then eventually blow herself in half by her number two turret, main gun turret. There was a, she had a full crew at the time of over 2,000 personnel, and I believe only about 200 of them survived. So these were very, very brave sailors. They knew what their fate was going to be. They didn't complain or bellyache. They accepted that they were that they they accepted the fact that they were selected to die for their country. So even though they were our enemies, I mean, we have to give credit for, for bravery where credit is due. Okay, I'm not going to go into any more about the ship's history. I'll put a link up for that so where you can go to and read all about the Yamato. Now I'm going to explain here. This is the Tamiya's Wonder 350th kit. This is their new tool kit. And... I also put on a wooden aftermarket wooden deck accessory to cover up some deck seams that were that that, that we had. 
Tamaya molded this model so they could also release a 1941 version of the, of the ship, which, which was a bit different. This model portrays the Yamato in April of 1945. When she was brand new in 1941 and in 1942, she didn't have as many anti-aircraft guns. They were added in 1944 to 45. She had additional secondary guns, 15.5 centimeter triple turrets on either side of the superstructure on the beam. Those were removed to make way for more anti-aircraft armament in April, in, in, in 1944 and 1945 as noted. But Tamaya engineered this model so, you, so they could release an earlier tooling of her to portray the ship, so they could portray a kit of the ship as seen in 1941 and in 1942. So the deck is made, and the, the wooden portion of the deck was molded in three pieces. And the only real issue I had with building this model is that those deck seams did not properly line up flush against each other. I had to sand down the seam pretty heavily. And then rather than try and rescribe all of the molded on planking detail, molded in planking detail, I chose to just put on an aftermarket wooden deck, which was the quickest and easiest fix. And that worked out very well. I also used Tamaya's upgrade set for the metal gun barrels for the main guns, the main 46 centimeter guns. And all of the other photo wedge parts which Tamaya included with the kit, I put on. There's lots of them. I also used some gold metal model photo wedge railings in the correct Japanese style. And let's see here. Also, I put on some 1 to 350 scale Japanese naval figures that are made by Fujimi, and you'll see them up close because I'm going to include, I'm going to do some close up passes of the model in macro mode of my camera once I do a, once I give you a few more view, angled views like this here. I'm going to move the ship around. So I will come back in a moment and I will and we will see the ship from a different angle. Okay, here we are with a, with a different angle of the ship, looking at the bow starboard side. I'll zoom in a little bit here for you. You can see the 46 centimeter main guns and the main gun turrets. Tamaya made this model so all of the gun turrets, even the secondary and any anti-aircraft gun turrets, could rotate individually and the barrels could elevate individually. I don't, I don't change any of that because of fear, for, for fear of breaking any of these small, some of these small fine parts that you see on here, so I leave it as is. But they did give you the the uh, options to choose to change to choose and change the angle of, of all and direction of the guns. And now we see the ship from a port angle on the bow. I will zoom in again a little bit here for you. And then we'll zoom back out. Now we will view the ship from the port side, port broadside. Now here we have a view from the port aft quarter.
and we have a view from the starboard aft quarter here for you. Now we will zoom in a little bit. I apologize for the noise in the background. My neighbor is, is presently trimming the hedges of it around his house. The area you see here in the aft area, this is the aircraft stowage area. Aircraft catapults are, un are visible here. There's an access door leading up into the actual hangar bay area. And we can see we have some reconnaissance aircraft on display here on the fan tail of the ship or on the aircraft handling deck. Okay, I'm going to come back now after a brief pause and give and give a nice up up close flyby of all of the details of the ship along the deck and the superstructure in the camera's macro mode. So we'll be right back. Alright, here we are now in macro mode and we're just going to do a, a sweep down the starboard side of the main deck and superstructure area. Now you can get a little bit of appreciation for the size of those 46 centimeter guns when compared to the human beings standing on the deck beneath them.
Uh, we're not focusing too well on the Japanese flag. These Fujimi Japanese naval figures I'm very impressed with. You can see they even have the jack. If you, look, if you can see close enough on your monitor, you can see that they even have the, the jacket crease on the front of the uniform jacket molded in. And just with a really, as well as other details in the clothing, with a simple paint job like you see here from normal viewing, they look just like a real person on the deck of a ship. It would be nice if they made some in different nationalities as well as some civilians for use with some of the larger ocean liner models in one or three fiftieth that are available. Alright, I'm going to stop, pause here, I'll come back from a different viewing angle. Now we'll have a view, a close-up view coming down the port side of the main deck. Some of the crewmen in the bridge tower area have binoculars, or at least the officers have binoculars, I should say. And the top platform deck, as you see, is the air defense tower, and there are all kinds of binoculars and other observational equipment located up there.
Okay, we're going to have one final pass down the deck from this angle. Okay, and that is going to bring this video to a close. I thank everybody that stayed tuned in to watch this, even though it ran a little long. I'm going to wish everybody, depending upon where you are in the world, a good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening, and ask that you all take care.